Shankaran Pillai fell into the septic tank. What the hell to do now? No, I'm not done. <laughs> it happened. A missionary went to a, s a very remote part of Africa three centuries ago. So he was surrounded by a very violent-looking cannibal tribe. Then he went down on his knees, looked up and said, Dear God, I am in trouble. Nothing happened. Then he said, God, I came on your work and I'm in real trouble, you're doing nothing. God said, no, you're not in trouble. Do one thing, you just pick up that stone which is in front of you and smash the head of the cannibal chief. He picked up the stone, inspired by God's words, and smashed the head of the cannibal chief. Then God said, okay, now you're in trouble <laughs> <laughs> this happened. A lady was driving and then she had a flat tire. She had never really done this, this changing tire business, but she read the instruction manual, she put the jack and lifted up the car, she undid the wheel, with great difficulty, she pulled out the heavy wheel from the boot and was trying to fix it and these four nuts that she had. She had kept it in the hubcap and with her high heels she was struggling and she stepped on the hubcap and all the four nuts flew in different directions. So she put the new tire, but she had no nuts. Then she was cursing and wondering and miserable, what the hell to do now? And she was a little nervous because she was hearing all kinds of noises from a mental institution which was across the street. <laughs> then on the third floor, there was a young man looking out of the window, watching this lady. Then he said, hey lady, look here. All you need to do is take one, one nut out of the three wheels and put the three nuts on this, you can drive to the gas station. With three nuts you can drive, no problem. She did that and she got the car down on the road. Then she looked up at him and said, you're so smart, why are you here? <laughs> he said, I may be nuts, but I'm not stupid. Oh, not <laughs> it's all right to be a little crazy, but you don't have to be stupid. It once happened, Shankar and Pillai went to the doctor and said, Doctor, I have some serious toilet problems. Then doctor asked, what is the problem? You are not able to urinate, you're not able to pee. No doctor perfect, every day six o'clock in the morning, like clockwork it happens. So you're not able, your bowels are not moving, what's happening? No doctor, it's perfect every day at seven o'clock in the morning, like clockwork always on the dot. Then doctor thought about it, then what is the toilet problem you have? Said, but doctor, I always get up at eight o'clock. <laughs> This happened one day, Shankar and Pillai was going home. <laughs> no, I'm not done <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Shankar and Pillai was going home. It is 7.30 in the evening. The rules at home, the wife's rules are eight, he must be home. It's only 7.30, he thought there's still time. Let me have a quick drink and go. He just stepped into the local bar. He had a quick drink and a quick drink and a quick drink and a quick drink and a quick drink. Then he looked at the time. It said 2 a.m. You know, drinking people are like yogis, they become timeless.
there's certain correlation. <laughs> then it's late and he got off the bar stool and tried to walk. It's such an unfair world. A man is supposed to walk on a round planet, as if that's not enough, it spins. <laughs> you notice that the planet is round and it's spinning only when you had a few drops more or a few drops are missing between two your two years. <laughs> Either you're drunk or you have a vertigo, then you notice the planet is round and spinning. Otherwise, you think it's flat and you're going on fine. <laughs> so with great difficulty, he was walking sideways and trying to find his way home. He was crossing a garden and he flipped over and fell face down into a rose bush. His face became a mess. Then he somehow reached home and you know these keyholes are so minute, it took twenty minutes to find the keyhole. Then he found his way up to the bedroom and then he went into the bathroom and he looked at his face, it was a real mess. Then he opened the medicine cabinet, took out medicine, plaster, band-aid, fixed himself up and slowly crawled into the bed. Fortunately, the wife is a big sleeper. <laughs> he slept. Morning eight o'clock, the wife took a bucket full of cold water and splashed it on him. <gasps> water voted, he woke up. Said, why, why, it's only a Sunday. She said, you fool, again drinking. She's, he said, honey, six months ago I promised you, since then I haven't touched a drop. She grabbed him by the shirt and took him into the bathroom and showed him all the plaster was on the mirror. <laughs> Why… why people have lost their clarity is only because of this, that if there is any suffering here, they think this one should be fixed. <laughs> this happened. Again at 2 a.m. in the morning, the public prosecutor called the judge. The butler in the house said, I can't wake him up, it's two o'clock in the morning. He said, no, this is very urgent, you have to. Then he connected. This telephone rang in the bedroom and the judge picked up and said, who is this? Mr. Justice, Justice Grover just passed away <laughs> and I would like to take his place. <laughs> so the judge said, well, I got no objection if the undertaker doesn't mind <laughs> On a certain day, Shankaran Pillai's wife was particularly incensed about her husband. So she made a soup and put five extra spoons of chili. And she came and served it, it was hot, steaming hot. And she wants to see what happens <laughs> She wrung her hands but he's reading the newspaper, she said, the soup is ready, she said, the soup is ready, she said, the soup is ready. I said, mm hmm hmm and uh, still reading the newspaper. Then she wanted to see whether it'll really work or if the chili powder is adulterated. Not strong enough. So she thought, uh, let her check it up and took a spoonful and just put it. It just exploded in her mouth. Tears welled up. Tears started flowing. Just at that moment, Shankaran Pillai kept his newspaper down and came. He looked at her and said, why are you crying? <laughs> she said, you know, just last year my mother died. and how much she loved this soup. When I just saw this soup bowl, it reminded me of my mother and tears came. Oh, is that so? Don't worry, it's, you know, what to do? We all lose our mothers and fathers sometime. It's all right. And uh, Shankaran Pillai 
went back to his newspaper with the soup and reading the newspaper, he put it in his mouth, it went boom like a dynamite because this was a full spoonful. <laughs> Tears came into his eyes. Then she came and said, Oh, you're also emotional about my mother. He said, no, no, I am not crying because your mother died. I am crying because that good mother left and she left you here and went. <laughs> Another day, Shankaran Pillai fell into the septic tank. I want you to imagine right up till here in filth. Please imagine and see. He tried to get out desperately, he couldn't. Then after some time, he started screaming, fire, fire, fire. Neighbors heard the fire screams, called the fire brigade. The firemen came and looked everywhere, no fire. Then they found him in the septic tank, pulled him out. And then they asked, why were you screaming fire? Then Shankaran Pillai retorted, if I said shit, shit, would you come? <laughs> you must do the right thing, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> so just working hard will not do. You must do the right thing, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs>